You're watching The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the God. We are The Breakfast Club. We got some special guests in the building from the fake HU, oh, Howard yeah. University. <laughs> <laughs> Jamila Lemieux. Good morning. And Amber Phillips. And Amber Phillips. I don't know what school you went to, Amber. I went to a small women's college in Pittsburgh called Chatham. Uh, we'll let you slide. We'll let you slide. The real Chatham. Good morning, yes, ladies. The real Chatham. Good morning. Now, I didn't know you were going to bring Amber, Jamila. I've I been know. talking to Amber in my DMs. Yes. I know. Yes. Not like that, but you know. Wow. Oh, yeah. You said you bring any black woman you want. I said, I'm bringing Amber. Absolutely. And it takes a real controversy here. for Jamila to get up here, Jamila and Amber. Yeah. So let's get right into the controversy that happened. That was when Charlemagne was pictured with uh, Tommy Lahren. Mm -hmm. And that was right after the Trevor Noah interview that she did. And it was a, a picture that you posted with some laughing emojis saying, I don't see color, do you? We don't see color. Somebody. And we by don't. the way, let's not act like it took controversy for them to get here. Because <laughs> Jamila hit me how long ago? About two weeks ago. We had yes. talked about me coming on the show before. And Q didn't email him back because Q doesn't respect women of color. No, Q. <laughs> <laughs> I produce it. It's his last week. Leave him alone. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Everything's blamed on you this week. When I email you, you email me back. So Jamila, I imagine you, if you had me on before, you could have saved him a lot of drama. See? Mm -hmm. So, Jamila, you were pissed though. Why, why were yeah, you Yeah, Jamila, upset? tell us why that struck a chord in you. Because it struck a chord in me too when I first saw it. You know, I feel... If George W. Bush gave us one good thing in his whole presidency, it was we don't negotiate with terrorists. <laughs> When you take somebody who has said things about our people mm -hmm. that are so racist, that are so hateful, that are so lacking in value, we don't need to sit with somebody like that to understand why she feels the way she does or where she's coming from. And if we do, it's not on a platform where we're laughing and joking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because the things that she says, she, she's not coming up with them on their, her own. She's not the architect. She's not the head of any of this. But she is making this very dangerous rhetoric normal and comfortable, right? So she's a cute girl. She looks like any other little blonde 20-something you can follow right. on Instagram. So her saying that goes further with young folks, particularly young white kids, mm -hmm. than it does coming from an Ann Coulter or a Donald Trump. She's making it cool. She's making it sexy. When you give her a platform and joke around and pal around with her as if she's anybody else you have a disagreement with, mm -hmm. that legitimizes her in ways that I don't think we should. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's just too dangerous. Things are too stakes are too high right now. And what we were all so upset with you about is so much of what she said and people like her was about black men. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like the idea that black men are inherently criminal. And so when black women got mad, it wasn't like, oh, F Charlemagne to hell with him, blah, blah, blah. It's like it was a lot of that. Too. It was a lot of that. Yeah. But it's coming from a place of we're defending you. When somebody is comparing the Black Lives Matter movement to the Ku Klux Klan, that's putting us in danger, but that's putting you in danger, too. We're standing up for you. We're saying, look, we love our men. We don't want you all to be brutalized by the police. This is somebody who's made light of young men and women, of course, but particularly young men being killed by the police or harassed by the police and stopped and frisked. And when you joke around with that and say, ha ha, we, you know, we can kiki and, and make little Black Penis Matters jokes and all that stuff. It's hurtful mm -hmm. to people who are literally putting their lives on the line. I'm a journalist. I'm a writer. She's an activist. Mm -hmm. There are people who are spending, and they're not famous, and you don't see them on CNN or MSNBC. They're mm -hmm. spending nights, weeks in jail. They're losing their jobs. They're and dropping it's not out that of they're school. they're not out there at all. The assumption that, well, why isn't there any woke black or Hispanic right. woman? But they are out there. But that's, not, but that's not what I said, though. But I do feel like we should... But that's how people took it. I feel like we should poke holes in her narrative any chance we get because she does have the voice of young people. She's going to be a voice for the conservative right for the next four years. But I years. think she means not in a joking manner. Right. Like, it's not a post well, I'm not an activist. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a guy that can go from serious... I can go from righteous to ratchet real quick. Right. I think, so coming from my perspective, I'm also known as the high priestess of Black Joy on our podcast called the Black Joy Mixtape. And there I you think go, there's Amber. a way. <laughs> Plug your go. platform. There you go. <laughs> there it is. There's a way to do both, right? I think there's this assumption around, that's why I'm so thrilled to be here. There's assumption around Black feminists that we're just sitting in our rooms reading Audre Lorde, being so serious all the time. But we listen to you, right? Like, we were laughing just, we've used Are You Done or Are You Finished several times right. in our own organizing spaces. Um, that's why we talk about Black Joy a lot, because there's room to joke with it, but there's also room to make sure that she doesn't leave your platform 
feeling more confident than before. She went back on her platforms and said all these terrible things about Trevor Noah, saying that he basically wasn't black enough. She made comments around you. Um, and I think she clearly didn't learn anything from being here. She you, was let off the hook in a major way. But you know what? Well, you know, we talked about it when she was supposed to come up here and uh, Charlamagne was talking about it. I thought it was a good thing that he went out with her. And the reason being is, you know, some people don't understand our community. They, they don't have black friends. They've never been to the hood. So they see what they see on television. They see what they see on the news. So I thought him meeting with her and possibly taking her into our world was a good thing. Well, she, he didn't the take her into our world, though. Yeah, no, no, what world that, did she go but to? The jokey jokes <laughs> are y'all hanging out on Times Square? But that's what yeah. I did. But that's We're what still I thought. In New York. You know, but see, it's a lot. I mean, it's even bigger than just hanging out in Times Square. It's, that wasn't like just us walking around Times Square. Like, it was actually a, a business meeting that went on before that, but maybe that'll come out later. But all I'm saying is the conversation that we had was me sitting there t explaining to her why her rhetoric is dangerous to black people, especially black men. Like we had these, it's not even the first time I've had this conversation with her. I had this conversation with her back in February in a public platform when I was on her show on the Blaze Network. And then when I saw what she said on Trevor Noah, I'm like, yo, she still doesn't get it. So since she's not coming to the Breakfast Club, let's sit down and have a conversation so I can explain to her why her rhetoric right. is so dangerous. But what does it mean to offer her friendship um, outside of holding her accountable. A big piece in the movement that we talk about is like, we're family, we're, we're this, but in order to be family, you have to struggle together and you have to have some common lines. And I think no one has taken the time to explain to her, actually, you are, what you're saying is white supremacist. Like, like we just went into, what you're saying is actually going to get us killed in a time where we're about to have a president who literally doesn't want people to protest, who wants to snatch away citizenship mm -hmm. if you burn a flag, mm -hmm. that that is going to show up. Like, we know this happened under Obama's administration. Mm -hmm. We know folks like Fred Hampton were murdered by the state, right? So if we are, um, and additionally, we need black publications. If any time is a time to say something real and to really hold these folks accountable, now is the time. Yes. Yeah, And I, I honestly, there are just people with whom you can't reason. You know what I mean? I think it's, it's it's the moderates that we might be able to have some success with mm -hmm. because they didn't show up by the droves to protect us from Donald Trump. Right. You know, a whole lot of white mm -hmm. voters stayed home. Black women, we do, we do. We showed up, we showed up. Majority of black men that came out and vote, they, they supported Hillary Clinton. Or at the very least, they were voting against Donald Trump, whether they were with her, with her or not. But someone like that can't be reached. And I don't think she can be reached in a fun, cool hip hop space. I don't think she can be reached by Trevor Noah, who's very conciliatory and all we have to do is listen to each other. But what your audience needs, I think, is for you all to just really understand the power that you all have in radio. You know, we had a great conversation about this on the way here or, or the other day. People, Hillary Clinton did an interview with you all before she spoke to a lot of journalists, yeah. people mm -hmm. who heard, who could say that they had done years of work mm -hmm. for their newspaper, their magazine, to get a interview with, you know, the Democratic right. nominee the for the presidency. It was the first time we really saw her being herself. She right. came to you all in the same way that for years people have come to Steve Harvey or Tom Joyner. They go to black radio because they know they can get scores of black people. You all represent more than black radio. You have that, but you're also mainstream so people come here to talk to millennials mm -hmm. so what are you going to talk to millennials about and for years Charlamagne, i felt like on the various shows that you've done i a lot of people i can't believe you like him you know he, he's problematic he's this i'm like he's complicated like a lot of people but i've heard you so many times be the voice of reason particularly around issues of race that's why i was so personally hurt mm -hmm. that this was the person that you wanted to joke around with mm -hmm. and her platform you know, is really based on hate and ignorance all of it. and people that believe those things feel like she's their spokesperson yes. mm -hmm. and if she doesn't have that she doesn't have that platform anymore but she exactly. already has a platform and that's why i made the comment i made which was not meant to be offensive in any way shape or form or discredit any black woman or hispanic woman i just feel like we need an online news network with news pundits that can combat that young voice that's gonna be coming from the conservative right for the next four years. And I think that we have that, you yeah. know what I'm saying? It doesn't like, we don't get boosted up in the way that she does because we don't represent what she does. And in our community, we don't have the money and resources. But like, look at me, I started my career with a blog. Mm -hmm. I'm 32 years old, I'm a media executive, right? Like I have, I'm in a position to hire other people, to hire editors, to assign work. And we have big plans for next year at Interactive One. I did that five years for Ebony. 
got people in print and digital who had never had bylines before, worked with the likes of Michael Denzel Smith and Mark Lamont Hill and Michael Eric Dyson mm-hmm. and all these, you know, and Asha Bandelay and Dream Hampton, all these people who've been doing work for years and all these young folks. Mm-hmm. You look at Crystal's. Absolutely. Right. You look at Francesca, like you look at all you look at Amber. We are building platforms. Now again, we're not gonna get put on a blaze. We're not getting shows on MSNBC like right. we were a few years ago. So what we need now more than ever is not to bolster somebody like her up by giving her access to your space, but to bolster somebody like Amber up. Right. So right now, maybe it's like, look, once a week, we're going to do a 15 minute Black Lives Matter. Just check in. We're going to mm-hmm. talk to an activist. We're going to talk to a journalist and just kind of talk about oh, what's going on in the more world. And more and more. You yeah, have. We've been doing that for the past know? six years. <laughs> You've been, you have. But I think it's like making it a concern. Like this is a thing that we're calling it what it is. And we're saying every right. Thursday, this is your black lives, you know, whatever. Yeah. Check trust in. Black but just, trust black women. Trust black women. And see, my, you know? and my thing is like, I, I, and I, I, I totally apologize. Like, I didn't look at Crystal in that way. Are Francesca in that way? Like I'm thinking, news pundit, but in yeah. a way they are. They absolutely news are. Pundits. They so are. how do we help them amplify their voices? You know, like allowing, like when you had me on your MTV show, it was something terrible that happened. Somebody had gotten killed. I was mm-hmm. kind of brought in to be the voice of reason. No, not to tell jokes. Not to tell jokes and stuff too. I'm ratchet. I, you know, like <laughs> we went to Howard. We I went to Howard. Howard. <laughs> you know, like I'm a we regular see you girl. When you get dressed up, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> I came into my tents, but like I want you all. Like I think. Like Amber was saying, this assumption that, you know, we're all just so angry all the time and we're mad. It's like, yeah, we're angry in the way that everybody in this room is angry because there are things that are happening in the world that are bad and scary. But we're also regular girls, Mm -hmm. you know, and folks that listen to hip hop and listen to you all who deserve to be heard. And I just think that, like, I feel for Angela sometimes. I'm like, just being the only woman in the room, period, is always hard. Mm -hmm. But with something like that, knowing that other black women were hurt and offended by something that you did yeah. quite innocently. And honestly, I don't think you go out of your way to say things to hurt black women, to get outraged. But when you do it, it's just how you receive yeah. what we say. So I appreciate you having us here today. Right. What do you think of the donkey of the day when he gave himself donkey today? Did you I, hear it? I, yeah, I heard it. I appreciated it. I think there was a little bit of, you know, I was wrong, but. But, 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 but you walked it back a little bit. Because you the walked but, it back. The but was, I was actually trying to empower us like i was saying let's create a platform with young black hispanic women to be a voice like tommy lauren i think we just forget forget the like tommy lauren not be like (laughs) tommy i never said be like tommy i know but i'm saying you said like tommy not just be like but 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 don't even bring her name but is tommy not a voice (laughs) but think about how she became a voice it's like facebook Facebook, the same way that well, any also, of us... Would... there's a, a whole thing, there's a whole conglomerate behind Tommy. Not, like, the, let's not... Let, name another show on the even, network. If, even if she... Well, The Blaze, I know about The Blaze because I work in activism, right? Mm-hmm. We see a lot of their work. Whenever something hits The Blaze, there'll be a young writer like a Renee Bracey Sherman. She's a young writer who writes about her abortion. What y'all, what we don't often see is that whenever black women speak out, there's places like The Blaze and Steve Banning sites that write articles in response to them that literally put these women women in danger. Say, I get, I've gotten my, we get my home threats. address mailed to me when I pop up on sites like that. I've gotten death exactly. threats. I've gotten rape threats. Things sent to my previous employer. There have been, there's been a concerted effort to get me fired from my last job right. when sites like that give us coverage. Right. That doesn't happen to her. No, you know what I mean? Like, people, she gets... No, no, she, no. she complained about that, but I told her... Well, look at the energy you're putting out. See, it's different with y'all because y'all not putting that energy out there. She's putting hateful energy out there. Right, and we're not saying that she deserves to get death or rape threats. She can be loud and wrong. I don't want anybody to do harm to her, but she doesn't risk the loss of her platform. Whereas with us, you know, working in traditional media, oftentimes there's just this kind of fear around anything liberal, just kind of like, well, maybe you went too far. Maybe the right. you've had those issues. I've seen that certain things that you've said or wrote on Twitter have people calling for you to get fired. And let her yeah. go because yeah. she's too controversial. She said, Especially when I was at Ebony. Double, yeah. it was, Do y'all it was realize mean. how much power y'all have on social media? Though? Yes. Even when y'all talk about like <laughs> Tommy, Tommy used Facebook to get popping. Nobody watches The Blaze. She took her little clips, put them on Facebook, they got popping. Y'all make things trend in moments. Yes. Mm-hmm. I've been trending for two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. I never was you. number one on Facebook. <laughs> All the interviews I've done, TV, I've done never until mm-hmm. black women collectively came together and said, we're going to try to get him up out of the paint. So y'all do that with Insecure on Sundays, number yes. one trending. Uh, scandal, How to Get Away mm-hmm. with Murder. Y'all can do that for your and own platforms. And it's turning into opportunities. Look at Lovey. And I think you all had a back and forth exactly. about the word females, right? She's a New York Times bestselling author now. 
You know, she started a blog. She was funny. She's a social media strategist. She tweeted about Scandal. I feel like Lovey's like half the reason Scandal blew all the way up. I hit, I, hit her, I hit her book in my house, too. I'm not going to lie to you. you my wife bought her book, and I hit it. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> I think you I should did. have I her was, on I your... was being hate. I was being paid. You should not be a hate. I think you should have her on your show and talk to her. You know I what I mean? Because if you will talk to somebody like Tommy. Talk right. to your sister. Even when, I, when you make us mad, when we make you mad, we need to be able to talk to each other because no matter how deep our differences are, we're family. She's not your family. Do you get a lot of support from our community? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. And black men. Black men love me. They black do. men, but also <laughs> black do. men can do better, especially on social media. And I think that's a thing that I've seen even doing shows and speaking out against the whole birth of a nation and Nate Parker. A lot of the pushback I receive from that is black um, from black men. And I think while we're trying to, you know, shed light on what white supremacists think of, think of us, there is also a role that you definitely play in educating these black men, because what yes. we know is that like. They can be so, like I heard you talking with Trevor Noah about um, your privilege of being a male and just being aware of that recently. Mm -hmm. That there's still, you have to know that there's still more to do around that. That a lot of the things that black men say to black women and a lot of y'all's rhetoric around us can ultimately get us hurt, can get us killed in our interpersonal relationships. You got to blame black West women Coast under, rap for that. Yeah, black women <laughs> no, under 50, like black men are our number one, source, uh, number two cause of death. And that comes from what? rhetoric. For black yeah. women. The number for two women. cause of death for black women yeah. is Jesus black men. Christ. Yeah, yeah, so. of a nation, a Hold on, where's community. that stat from? From I gotta look that one up. Look that one up. Go search it. That's a domestic violence. That's a domestic so violence. That's what domestic violence is. So as much as we're fighting for you, loving you, we also enter, like allowing going on a date with you all can end in our murders. Like that's wow. just the truth of the matter, right? <laughs> so we have to do the culture shift work of educating black men, even from little things like we don't want to be called female. What does it mean to be like, okay, they don't want to be called female, let's call them women. Right. Because we need you all to put as much humanity on us as possible. I think it's the I, approach too though, because when I said the whole female thing, that was another thing. I've been using female my whole life. Yeah. And, and all of a sudden it's like, you stupid motherfucker, you disrespectful ass, <laughs> you don't know. But you, you, know, you gotta realize this, and not everybody, I, I, I snap off on people on Twitter, but like we've talked face to face before. Mm -hmm. You even asked me about the female thing, mm -hmm. you know, briefly at MTV. Like, I can talk to people in, in in this voice, and we can have a dialogue and be respectful, and I can try to educate you about some things. And you can tell me some things that I may not know about how Black men think and feel, and we can have that dialogue. Sometimes when you encounter Black women online on the street. We're pissed off. We're upset. And we're tired of, of feeling like we're not being heard. Mm -hmm. We're tired of feeling like we're not being respected. And so it's kind of like, well, why does she come at me that hard? Why is she being so aggressive, so angry? Because we're dealing with a lot. And we don't always feel loved and supported by men who look like us in the way that we deserve to be. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like the men in my life, my father, the men I date, my homeboys, like I get love, right? I get treated well. I only keep men around me who know, who respect women. So some of them call themselves feminists. Some of them would never say that, but they respect women. They value black women. They listen to black women. Mm -hmm. But a lot of us don't have that experience. So we all, we don't get it in every space that we step into. And that's a problem. And I think it's, we have always talked about black men and boys being in danger at the police and the classrooms. Mm -hmm. We don't talk about the fact that black women are going through so many of those same things. That school to prison pipeline that is harming black boys is harming black girls. Absolutely. The right? numbers are literally the same. The numbers are the same. And you have the body shaming on top of that, the, mm -hmm. the, the ways that the school to prison pipeline work on black women too. Like you have kids who um, once black girls start wearing leggings, now the leggings can't be worn in school right. because we are developed quicker than folks. And it's just, we need to normalize that actually it's not on these girls to correct the ills of this society, right? Like men have to take some accountability too. I just agree one with everything you're saying. One real quick thing. You, when you, the first thing you said about like more black women, you know, what if you all did what she did, right? I looked at your mentions. You, Anything you say, there's scores of young men, particularly black and brown, and some of them white, saying, yes, sir, get them. No matter what you say, you say the sky is purple. Mm -hmm. It's going to be some young dude like, tell him, Charlemagne. <laughs> so just thinking about that influence you have over how young men see us, mm -hmm. right? That's important. And we need you to be a voice for us because we are a voice for you and we support you. But I just, I just recognize your power. Like, y'all could trump her easily because of the power you have on social media. I feel like social media is the engine. We just have to create a car. I think we do have to create an online news network and say, yes, Jamila is a news pundit now. Uh, Crystal is a news pundit now. Uh, Francesca is a news pundit now. I really think we need that. 
I mean, and I'm working. I run one of the sites I, I am in charge of is news1.com. Um, we're building out a big news site. Like, I'm on that. You know, I can't talk about a lot of what 2017 is going to hold for me in terms of that sort of work. Um, but I'm on that. And I'm also open to stopping by here on the way to work. So, right. you know, if you need somebody to explain, you know, they're talking about overturning Roe v. Wade. What does that mean? I can get somebody from Planned Parenthood here, here to help you explain that. I can bring in a reproductive justice advocate to, you know, to talk to you all about those things. But I think it's really important that you understand that we're your family. Mm-hmm. And I think that just going forward and how you talk to female celebrities and how you respond when male celebrities come in here and say certain things about women, understand that black women live and die for our men. Literally. Absolutely. And we deserve that in response. That's why I think it was a lot of pushback with the Nate Parker thing, too, because yeah. with Nate Parker, he was accused of rape. He was found not guilty. Right. So if, if when he came here, one of the questions I asked him was, can a black man ever truly be not guilty in America? Because when Birth of a Nation came out, it seemed to me like it was our own people that, didn't that was tearing down Nate mm-hmm. more than anybody. It's like the white man put the little seed out there and we took it and fertilized it and made it grow to something tremendously crazy. I think you got to realize that the whole Birth of a Nation thing was a perfect storm in a lot of ways. I didn't feel the same way that some of my friends felt about the film. I, I have not seen it yet, and that's not me deciding to boycott it. I just, I meant to, and then I just didn't. Well, like now, it like wasn't, why haven't you seen it? Because it was very important, and you know how so first to be, time so it To be, be fair, you know? I meant to... I, there's you a messed a little bit. No, that's, that wasn't okay. it. I honestly just didn't get to it. And when it was time for me and, and someone to go see it, I was just a little bit too depressed that week. And I was like, I can't really deal with this right now. It's a heavy In the movie. Mil- it's a heavy movie, mm-hmm. right? And I do commit. I will see the film. Mm-hmm. You know, I always said, and I told people publicly, I respect everyone who said they can't see it because of Nate Parker. I have not made that decision. I plan to see it. Mm-hmm. But here's the thing. The studio invested all this money in this film. There is such a thing called buyer's remorse. Right. I don't think that there was necessarily a campaign to destroy this film. But you have to understand this was a subject matter that Hollywood does not like taking on. Number one. Number two, you have somebody who's not yet a household name. So there's not this instinct to protect him in the way that there was a Bill Cosby or some of these other celebrities, Mm -hmm. black, white or otherwise, that have been accused of these horrible Mm -hmm. things. Three, he did not handle himself well in the press. I don't think the studio did what they were supposed to do. Hollywood is hiding a lot of scandals and a lot of skeletons, right? They did not get him the sort of PR training and team that he needed to say, look, let's have a real conversation about rape culture. Let's talk about the Mm -hmm. fact that one, this woman is no longer living. So we can't retry him for something where the victim or the alleged victim is no longer here to defend herself or, or to explain her side of the story. And we also can't put him back on trial. So what do we do with this? We can talk about consent. Mm-hmm. We can talk about male privilege. And he did this one interview at Ebony.com where he was kind of speaking Try that stuff. It. And I was like, okay, I feel like somebody's got to him. He's starting to understand it. And then he became very defensive. Right. On one hand, if you feel I'm 100% innocent, this was the worst experience of my life. I thought I left it behind me. And now it's here to tear down what I think is my life's work. Yeah, on some level, you'll be defensive about that. But on the flip side, you have a film to sell. You're dealing with a sensitive subject. Rape is incredibly hard to prosecute. Mm -hmm. So it's possible that he did it. It's possible that he didn't. It's possible that he felt in that moment he was 100% just doing what she wanted him to do. We don't know because we weren't there. But the idea that black women should be punished or shamed or or people being mad at them for not supporting the film when the majority of the people that purchased the tickets to the film were black women is unfair. Also, we're expected to support him no matter what. We can't demand that. We don't get that. I've never heard anybody say everyone has to go support anything Ava DuVernay does. I've never heard that um, Lupita Nyong'o had the mm-hmm. King, Queen of Katwe film mm-hmm. at the same time. Mm-hmm. I didn't hear anybody saying black men must go support Queen of Katwe. Mm-hmm. Right. But we were all supposed to support Birth of a Nation. I think it was because it was Nat Turner, though, not because of Nate Parker. It was like Nat, Nat Turner is like one of the greatest black liberation stories ever. So I think it was more so we got to go support Nat Turner in this black liberation story as opposed to Nate Parker. But also the rhetoric around it, again, placed black women as like at blame. Right. That because whether you chose to see the movie or not, again, I think. Going a step beyond that, we need to have um, conversations around survivors of sexual assault and rape that we need to uphold and lift them up and um, defend them as much as we would a Nate Parker. But um, also there's this piece around it's okay not to see this movie when you're dealing with all the things that black women deal uh, with in life. Like I just 
told you this stat. Um, all black women have experience of being not being able to walk down the streets and being catcalled. But additional, additionally, then what is the work that we're willing to do to make sure people know more stories? Because there's also Harriet Tubman. There's also Fannie Lou Hamer that people don't know n- enough about. And to say that because you didn't support this one movie means you don't know the history of um, black liberation is also absurd. But but being that this movie didn't do well at the box office, it's going to be hard another for another black chance. liberation story right. to be told. But then Viola's been trying to do Harriet Tubman for years. Mm-hmm. But also, you're on air every day, right? So what is now, uh, what is the responsibility of folks who do have platforms to push these narratives? If we're so upset that no one knows about this story, then where are we talking about the story? Because also, everyone who needs to know this might not have a, um, a ticket for this movie. Because one of the things I thought was missing from the rhetoric was I didn't hear about Birth of a Nation giving away a bunch of tickets to school the same way Selma did. They did. Not mm-hmm. as many, but they were they did it. But again, they, did, they didn't have the support behind them that Selma did at that mm-hmm. point. You know, because now it was hard. There are a lot of people just like, I don't really want to deal with it. Right. This is too messy. It was yeah. too controversial yeah. behind the scenes for them to say, okay, right. let's market. See, that's my thing. I feel kids. like we get distracted too much. But like, it wasn't a distraction. That's the thing. I think that when the rape allegations came out, had he done it. a better job of handling it? Had there been, even in spaces like this, as opposed to attacking people who didn't want to support the film, saying, let me bring in somebody to talk about why they're not supporting the film. You know, and having a nuanced conversation about sexual assault and just respecting and understanding why some women felt like they couldn't support him just at the suggestion. And there were rape scenes in the film. So there were some women that were just like, I don't, I don't want to watch, you I know, mean, enslaved happened in women. slave times, though. Absolutely. Yeah. But if you're a victim of violence, and just remember how at that time, the whole narrative was, you bitches are taking away this important right. moment from us. You know, and if that had been handled differently, I think the film would have been more successful. And there was an op- there there were so many opportunities for Nate himself and people around him to just say, we are going to lead this conversation about sexual assault. We are going to do some things. And I know mm-hmm. there was some interest on we have I have friends in common with Nate, so I'm, I'll be transparent about that. I do know that there was talk about doing things around that, but every it's just. It went wrong. And you know, again, it's that's when, when... It's hard when you think you're, you're innocent. You know what I mean? It's hard to say, yes. why am I talking about this when I'm innocent? Right. I didn't do right. anything. Why should I have to do it? You know, right. that's what I think is looking at. Like you said, it's both sides and, and the young lady passed. So it's right. only one but side. But for him, well, it's probably bigger is... than him. It's a bigger conversation for people in general. But through right. all this, what's getting lost? Because people who mention, it's important, to mention, it's important mm-hmm. to mention that but, she didn't just pass. She died of suicide. Right. That is a big part of this story. Additionally, I know there's rape in the, um, and you're saying it happened in enslavement times, but enslavement is so awful, so tragic and disgusting that you can actually tell that story without rape, especially when two of the people who are ahead of that movie who wrote it were accused of rape and did not know how to even talk about it. So what does it mean that you use it as a plot but, to move that story forward when you didn't even have to do that? Like they, that it was, but in, in the real Nat Turner story, it was his mother who got raped. So either way, you'd have to have some type of mention of rape. But to be fair, in the real Nat Turner story, his mother was more active in getting free than she was depicted in the film, right. from what I've heard. So you took some artistic liberties there. And I don't want to critique the film because I didn't see it, but I see why it ended up the way it did. And that's unfortunate. That's not what I wanted for the film. That's not what I wanted for our ability to talk about sexual right. assault. Right. You know, I didn't want... I mean, we can't have another story about this. And we, we still haven't more. had the conversation about Nat Turner. Nat, you know how many white people Nat Turner killed? But do you Not know? that I like to see white people <laughs> getting killed. I'm just saying. But I, mean, I think that you being somebody who wanted to push for this film, had you not allowed the conversation to go in that way for it to become like, why are they don't, you know, they don't want this film. But to, then I get to... y'all mad at me. Then it's like, oh, now why are you making light of rape? Or why you don't want to talk about rape? Charlotte? No, but I'm saying that's that would have been a great time to say we need to have a conversation about college sexual assault. We did. We, had, we need we had to a have a conversation mm-hmm. about, but but without the pointing the finger at people who were upset at the film. Now, what do you think? I actually was trying to do a whole, you know, we did the What Now special yeah. on MTV. I was actually trying to do a What Now on campus rape culture because I really feel like a lot of young men nowadays don't know the difference between sexual assault and consent. And I feel Absolutely. like we have had this conversation up here numerous times just based off of things that have happened in we the have, news. Yeah. Oh, rape yeah. is always, I hate but to say it, but I rape wanna, is always so, I mean, look yeah. at our president. Exactly. <laughs> right. And I want to bring up Bill Cosby now that we brought his name up previously because you see now they're saying he might take a plea deal because he doesn't want to have to go to jail and die in prison and this is a way for him to avoid jail. And a lot of people feel like this whole Bill Cosby, these allegations were just a conspiracy of people trying to bring Bill Cosby down and just ruin his, tarnish his whole entire legacy and everything that he's built. I'd love to get your take. I know you've spoken about it, you know, before. Yeah. 
I, I um, <laughs> yes, to go first? I was my my first issue of Ebony when I switched from digital to print was the Cosby cover, mm-hmm. and so that's something I'm super super proud of, and just that we. That conversation was a conversation. It wasn't just about like down with Bill Cosby. It was like we need to talk about what this means to us as a people mm-hmm. to lose this show, you know, or to say, hey, I'm still so I still love the show. The show had an impact on me. It still matters, you know, to lose this icon or to say I can separate the man from the work. I'll say this, you know, that's a terrible conspiracy if it didn't work out until this man was at the twilight of his life. <laughs> Come on. Mm-hmm. Like, you didn't do this in 1987 when, you know, before A Different World got on the air. Mm-hmm. You didn't do this when he was one of the most powerful men in the industry. This comes out at the end of his life because institutions protected him. Right. He had a team. He had people at the network. He had lawyers. He was able to hide, you know, these these alleged things that he's done mm-hmm. for a very long time. Um, Why now, though? I think... Well, at what point have we ever been open to uh, victims of sexual assault and right. rape coming forward? Mm-hmm. There, It's not... There, were, There's no perfect time to say right. that one of the most powerful people, powerful black people in Hollywood, has treated you terribly. And let's be clear, people did come forward before. Yeah, That's yeah. another part of it that everyone's acting like this just happened and people are just now coming forward. But previously, people did. Oh, that's absolutely. what I mean. Why and now, why, though? Like, why now was Bill Cosby, I guess, vulnerable because a man and weak enough said to bring down? Because I, I, a man said something. In my opinion, when Hannibal Buress said something, another black man actually holding a black man accountable yeah. to their history, was, that's when we had to tell a moment. Yeah, I just want to raise my hand and say <laughs> that Hannibal was joking. His intentions were not <laughs> he wasn't yeah, trying. to bring. Uh, his intentions were not to purposely but, but support he, black but, women. But he no, they weren't. But they but he did <laughs> but he reveal did. something, or he reminded us of something about Bill Cosby, which is that allegedly, and by some of the things he's admitted to in that deposition, in your personal life, you were doing some real foul shit. Right. right. But while you were telling black people, he would have hated y'all. Pull your you know what I mean? Up. Pull Don't your listen pants to up. Stop Absolutely. listening to rap music. You know we got to be here about. Um, the grandmother having sex with the grandchild and, right. you know, unwed mothers. And he was just so conservative and mm-hmm. so not loving to black people. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, not in the way we thought he was from the Cosby show because it was such a good show. And it was very, you know, steeped in this whole respectable middle class. You he's know, an old black like, man on the lawn. He's an old black man on the lawn yeah. saying, really, but like two steps past your average old black man on mm-hmm. the lawn. You know, making fun of how the names that we give our children and, and mm-hmm. just single parents. And he was just so Rich heavy. old black man. Rich on the old way. black man yeah. on the yeah. line. Yeah. The worst possible one. <laughs> but so heavy handed and nasty about it while allegedly you've assaulted dozens of women or attempted to right. assault dozens of women. So it's like, why now? Why not now? You know, yeah. if anything, he was very lucky that he got to enjoy his life right. until right. his till almost 80 years old and do all of that work and make yep. all that money. And, and and not be held accountable. So he's being held accountable now. That that's his cross to bear. But he, I mean, like with it, his show, I don't, does... I don't want his show off the air. See, like as a kid growing up in Queens, the show was inspiration for me to go to school. Mm-hmm. It Absolutely. was inspiration for me to go to college because we didn't see positive shows. Right, went... she's saying separate the man. Yeah, from but, but yes. if you separate the man, then you got to do it with Nate Parker. You know what I mean? Because it's, it's the same. It's not so. It's not the same. And again, I Nate is young, and I think that if Nate does what he needs to do to get right with himself, to get right with women, and to, to really hold himself accountable mm-hmm. and, and talk about the issue, I think that Nate's career can continue. Not in this Nate, era. Social media I, is not that forgiving. Y'all not that forgiving on social media. But, but you gotta make, you have to try to be forgiven. That's the thing. You have yeah. to really do work. You have to say, I'm in therapy. I've been going to these men's, you know, we got this group of men and we talk about respecting women. We talk about this. What about that lady you killed? What about that lady who killed herself because you raped her? And then in that case, people like me will stand up and say, I'm not going to hold Nate accountable for that woman committing suicide because how many women get raped? Right. I'd be willing to bet you the majority of the women in this room have been sexually assaulted. I have. So it's not fair for us to diagnose. Jesus. I'm just saying, like, yeah. it's not fair to diagnose suicide as, as a symptom of, you know, she got raped so she killed herself. People who are dealing with mental illness, get raped, right? Like right. people may have been living a great life and then the rape sets them down a, a very dark path and they commit suicide. Mm-hmm. But right. you can't assume that because of what ha- what happened that she killed herself. Right. If you were racked by guilt because maybe something that you presented as consensual or that you felt was okay and then later you changed your story and two people were put on trial, that could lead somebody to a place where they commit suicide. There are a hundred reasons why that woman mm-hmm. could have killed herself. Mm-hmm. And it's not fair for any of us, for us to decide what that reason was. So if he were to really do some serious work around educating young people about sexual assault and consent and people bring her up, I will be the first one to say, hold on, that's not right. Mm-hmm. So the same way we have that power to 
take people's projects down, you know, intentionally or not intentionally, or to force them into a conversation, we will use that power to support you. Especially yeah. with this Bill Cosby, it really makes you see how hard it is for women to come forward yeah. to even discuss being sexually assaulted or raped. Because all these women that were coming forward, the first thing people were saying is, this bitch lying. Mm -hmm. right. Why is she making this up? Why is she hanging She's out with him? She's trying to get a paycheck. Why would she bring this up 30 years later? Mm -hmm. I agree with all of that. But as a black man, just playing devil's advocate, can we ever get the benefit of the doubt? Can you we could ever be, be not I mean, guilty? You, you were charged. Like, could Bill possibly he be wasn't charged, innocent? Was he? I mean, his, I, no, his not when there's 60 women. Yeah, you're you're stuck stuck at, like, at, the, at the best, the white he, man can do a lot of at, at best, he's been like disrespecting a lot of and being hella I inappropriate. Agree with that. And I think. Also, we act like your project being canceled is the worst thing that can happen to you. And it just isn't. If you're not able to collect a dollar, but you can sit somewhere and reflect on what you did wrong, then so be it. And I think that's rhetoric, too, around Twitter and black women dragging people that people think just because we set you down for one thing that you can't get back in the game. I just get and pissed off when I, see my, when I see black men who can have the same exact situation as white men, and white men like Roman Polanski or right. Oscar, the Donald Trump will become you, president, listen. but we shut our own right. down. But, but white here's people the thing. aren't the That's... standard for good. Though. Exactly. We're allowed to hold you all accountable to us. Right. And for you to compare yourself to white folks, it's, it's just, it's not, it's not even relevant. We're saying you as a person, as an individual in our community, you have to do better. I don't care what white folks are doing because at the end of the day, we have to commune with y'all. And if, look, if, if that's the case, if we're holding white people as a standard and saying we want black men to get away with bad stuff in the same way that white men do, then do we get to say we want to be treated like delicate flowers of womanhood like white women and not be held <laughs> accountable for anything we do? Right. Because we don't get treated like white women. We don't get bolstered up. That's why I was like, yeah, you have this Tommy chick. There's a million Tommies on black Twitter. Right. Pretty black girls that tweet about feminism, politics, any number of subjects. Nobody's going to take them out of obscurity and put them into this big platform, setting her up to get a show on, say, Fox News. Right. Like really be on the mainstream, really be on TV. She'll probably be co-hosting The View in the next two weeks. Bill Cobb be right, right up, but y'all got him out the But pay. you know what? But, <laughs> but no. Walker no. probably would have did that too. But the goal, the goal the for us should not be to get away with doing bad things because right, white people white get people away with it. it. The goal is for them not to get away with doing bad things to us. True. The goal is not yeah. for men to get, any man to get away with sexual assault or sexual abuse, but for them to be held accountable and to create a world where men don't want to do that to women. Mm -hmm. Where you know you're a man of means and influence. You can go to a bar, you can go to a club, you can talk to a woman nicely, you can ask her to do something with you, she does it, you can shake hands and walk away. Right. There's no reason to do it, to interact with women in any other way when you're Nate Parker as a college athlete or Bill Cosby as a superstar. There's no reason for that. Mm -hmm. And if we keep giving passes to people for that sort of behavior, if we keep refusing to hold ourselves accountable as parents, as teachers, for how we don't talk to young people about sex, how we don't talk to them about the language of consent mm -hmm. and desire, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But beyond no means no, yes means yes then we're going to keep having these situations happen over and over again. Where did this narrative that black men treat white women better than black women come uh, come into play? Observation. <laughs> because growing up, I don't know, Henry, I don't know about you. Growing yeah. up, white girls were the girls that we would smut out. Like, those were the ones that we would ask for head and all of that stuff. We didn't, you, you didn't do that to black people. People always feel like when better. a black man makes it, he gets a white woman. That's been, you I know. Really Kanye West said it women. himself. I, mean, I, yeah. to, I wasn't from Queens and I went to Hampton University. Like, there wasn't too many white women. Like, yeah. You know, growing up, and, I, and my mom and pop listened, like, it was like, automatically, you're black, you're going to stay with black. That's how I was raised. And, and, and growing up, the hoes in the was, hood was respect, the white girls. The whole white girls that wanted to hang around See, the black guys. Charlamagne, this was, is a, a male privilege moment, But I'm too. just saying. <laughs> it's <laughs> called all I white just, girls just My whole life, I never, <laughs> it was just certain things. Black women were here. That's what we seen on TV. White women were here. Like, right. we, but you know what? And, that, and that's no, interesting. Really. And that's the unspoken thing mm -hmm. that I thought would have came up more during, it, it could have come up during the Nate Parker situation. Mm -hmm. And how, if I'm a college athlete, and I've been trained by even, maybe even my parents, certainly by my coaches, my peers, my friends, by hip hop, to believe that white women are consistently sexually available to me. Yes. Right? And to be yes. fair, there are the stories of the black basketball player being in his hotel room and the girl just not, the white girl knocks on the door mm -hmm. and walks in. Mm -hmm. You know, that does happen. That's not saying that's all white women. That doesn't mean that because a white woman has come to your room, now you get to assume she's there to do whatever with you and your friends, and it's right. not assault. It was just her being a white woman. Like, that's not fair, and that's mm -hmm. not right. But that is something culturally that a lot of young men and young women have been taught. As far as treating us, you know, treating white women better, 
I think that there's a space at times that is made to engage them and hear them out, which is why somebody, there's just white female privilege. They're particularly a good looking, quote unquote, white woman like Tommy has. And so if she looks okay. She, I mean, she's not what beautiful is to me, and I certainly know that I'm not what beautiful is to her, and that's totally fine. But I know that she exists in a world where she is treated as a very pretty woman. If she were 300 pounds with bad acne, she probably would not have been introduced to you. She wouldn't have been introduced to Trevor Noah, and she wouldn't have blown up in the way that she, she did. She wouldn't be on the blaze. She wouldn't be on the blaze. Would be on she would not blaze. be the face of anything, right? But just to being willing to have that conversation with her, like, this isn't the first time that black women have really come for you on Twitter. And again, yes, you've had me on your show. I reached out to you about something in particular. I hope we get a second to talk about that, mm-hmm. um, about being on the show. You've been respectful to me. To be fair, I'm already an industry person. You know what I mean? I'm easier to talk to. People perceive me a little bit differently than they do folks like Amber. But... I re- I hate Amber. You did. Yeah, I don't. We have I still talked too. Yeah, the and Black Joy mixtape. I didn't even know the that. The Black Joy mixtape would love to still talk to Charlamagne. Like Absolutely. this is a, such an opportunity. I do not take it lightly at all because I was just sharing with them how, for me coming to this work as someone who's building a platform because I'm an activist, right? We um, created the Black Joy mixtape podcast because we knew it was an opportunity for us to have the conversations that we have in our living room on a platform that we hope to grow. But I appreciate this so much because, again, your platform reaches the people who we want to activate. The folks who listen to this show are the people who I will hope to register to vote or who I will hope to turn out to a um, Say Her Name rally. Mm-hmm. Um, and that that's just such a critical point. And, again, it can be all done. People consume politics and culture at the same at the same time, right? And they do. Donald Trump will be on The Apprentice, apparently, um, doing politics yes. and pop culture <laughs> from the highest level. Yes. So why not us as well? I agree. Okay, so what is it that you wanted to bring up so we make sure we get that to That I spoke to. Yes, spoke so to I reached out to Charlamagne after Nick Cannon was on the show. Nick Cannon. Yes, Lord. because of some of the things he said about Planned Parenthood and black genocide. And I know that you've had other guests on this show, I'm not even going to call them out by name, who also speak to that same way of thinking. Mm-hmm. And it's dangerous. So as somebody he who... Yeah. He talked about Planned Parenthood being um, black genocide, particularly yeah. about abortion. And I am of the belief that it is incredibly important that black women have access to reproductive health care. Mm-hmm. Planned Parenthood, which I, I do not work for them. I've done work with them. I've spoken at some of their conferences. I've been on panels with them. Mm-hmm. I consider myself to be an ally and an advocate for Planned Parenthood. They provide so many people in our community, men and women, and gender nonconforming people with access to mammograms, to STD and STI testing, to, I'm sorry, breast cancer screenings, not mammograms, breast screenings, um, birth control, condoms, things that people need to have healthy sexual lives. Mm -hmm. And what we know is that the majority of adults of, you know, childbearing age are sexually active. Now, I don't expect everybody to share my views on abortion. I understand that that is a moral decision that each individual has a right to make. But when you take a huge platform and you're a huge celebrity and you say something like Planned Parenthood has advocated for black genocide or represents black genocide, that's simply not true. And I don't like always deferring to the 3% number, but it don't, abortion only represents 3% of the business of Planned Parenthood. Most Planned Parenthood mm-hmm. locations do not provide abortions. I don't like saying that number because it also implies that there's something wrong with abortion. And people also need more access to abortion care and they should have access to abortion care. And if we we think that like there's this myth that abortion is just birth control for irresponsible black women having a whole bunch of sex. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of things to a lot of people. But most of the people who've had who have abortions are already raising children. Right. This is somebody making a decision that for economic reasons, for personal reasons, that they're not interested in bringing another child into the There's world. There's women that are married and they're struggling financially and they decide, okay, we don't want to have another child. Right. And I, for fundamentally, and for him I this- fundamentally agree, disagree with black women having abortions. Why? Why? I'm just messing with y'all. I just, I, just want, I just want to see what the reaction is. That's going to be the That's going to be the That's not what we want to see. I couldn't help it, though. My heart dropped. See, I just couldn't help it. I couldn't help it. But see, I was like, but why? I was going to say, here you go. Tell us more. But also, in Nick Cannon saying that Planned Parenthood is supporting black genocide, what that lands on the ear is is that black women are supporting the the killing of our community. 
And we just know that's not true. Black women are making the best decisions they can with the resources they have. And actually, if black, if Nick Cannon would like to lead a conversation on reproductive health care, we can talk about how there's grown men out here who still don't know how to put on a condom the right that way. Is a fact. That, that is, is fact. way more effective than you saying that we're killing our kids. Grown our men using the wrong size condoms. Yes, they need magnums quit and they it. know damn well. You know damn well you, you don't need that gold wrapper. Right. I do think condoms are system- <laughs> systemically uncomfortable for black men. <laughs> <laughs> they are. They're systemically no. uncomfortable. They they should, you know, we should do a condom dis- demonstration right now because of that. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, but Amber, you know, you know what bothers me though about our community? I mean, I said this before. I feel like when somebody in our community says something that most of us, a majority of us, don't agree. We attack. It's attack. Social mm-hmm. media and, and calls I have that. a problem with that because they might not know. They might not have the information. They not may, might not be educated. So I feel like when they attack, people are scared to say what they really feel mm-hmm. and never know what they're feeling. You know, this like, is coming from a personal place for Envy because Envy, <laughs> no, 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 it's not that. Envy <laughs> said he agreed with Stop and Frisk a couple months ago. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. It went crazy. I mean, but, I mean, when somebody tries to kill you and you have four bullet holes in your car and you know, you're trying to go home to your family. You say things that make you emotional, and, so and that's, that's what it was. That's but, one of the things people use to say the Breakfast Club is problematic. Envy agrees with Stop and Frisk. Charlamagne feels black women don't have no platforms. And what's but, the other one? I forgot. But mm-hmm. also think about where those attacks are coming from, right? I think there are some folks who are definitely just popping off to be popping off. Mm-hmm. But when I came, when like we just laid out, right, the attacks are coming from people who are also trying to save their own lives. Right. There are a lot of people who are not here right now because of stop and frisk, if we're using that example, right? We know Eric Garner is gone. Mm-hmm. We know that there are countless, if from my, I'm from Columbus, Ohio, Tamir Rice isn't here right now. Mm. So the reason why people are coming out and they're saying, hell no, you're not going to say this is because we're scared. Well, a lot of us have it? to go back on. And like you're saying, like there's there's two sides to this. Right. You want to protect your family, too. Mm-hmm. And there are people who are like, we're we're dealing with this at every side. Right. Mm-hmm. And we don't have as big a platforms as we need to to get the communications right on why our lives are important. So I would see the attacks as a conversation for you to ask, say more. No, but, the, why but that's, are you? Right. Some people might have been stopped and frisked and had their own personal situations no, right. that that's happened. Because I mean, you, you're talking to somebody that was on both sides, but right? I'm sure and numerous times, and, and that's been in this situation. I feel for y'all. In New but York. you know, the sad thing about it is a lot of the information that you look up online, a lot of it's not true, a lot of it's not accurate. So you mm-hmm. think it's true, you think it's accurate, you think it's doing a good thing. And what happened was me being in the community, doing these talks and doing shows, I would have women that would come up to me who had kids that have been killed from Stop and Frisk mm-hmm. or teachers that said my students are late because of Stop and or Frisk. Or people that go to jail because they had a little weed on them. Yeah. Right. right. From so it Stop makes you open it up and it makes you think about it and it changes your mind. And it right. had nothing to do with, oh, they were on Envy, but I think a lot of these times conversations need to be conversation. had. Conversation. Yeah, a lot of us don't have the information. Exactly. Yeah, that's but why you it's so important to have the conversation mm-hmm. with our folks and right. to keep having these conversations with our folks. Mm-hmm. Like, even back in the day when you had the debates with um, uh, Malcolm X and James Baldwin, like, you brought more black people and more black intellectuals together right. so that we can get to the heart of this. That's worth having. I don't, we already know what Tommy thinks about us. Right. She don't think shit about, she don't think anything about mm-hmm. black folks, right? Yeah part of my language. She thinks but we, we put ourselves in this situation. Yeah. And, we and that conversation is so valuable for you to know. she has one perception of us as a people. But like, just, I literally had a conversation with her about why she supports Trump, right? Her reasoning for supporting Trump is that Trump's anti-establishment, he's anti-government, but I'm like, how could you support somebody who empowers such hate? And she was like, I'll be the first to admit that when I go to Trump rallies, there's a fraction of people at these rallies that are racist like hate black people i've never seen anything like it this is her words so i said but you're not you you would say that the whole totality of the trump movement isn't like that and she said no not at all i said that's the same way you got to look at black lives matter like it may Mm. be a section of people Mm. you saw walking down the street who were saying kill cops i want cops dead but that don't represent the whole movement for whatever reason she couldn't grasp that concept because she doesn't doesn't want to to. to. she doesn't have to she she did after a a conversation say it out loud that's true. No, That's she's true. not. She's not gonna go back to her. She'll say what happened when she went on the show after that. She went on the show and she said Trevor wasn't black enough, and yeah. she allowed that the the man I forget his name Archery, Archery mm-hmm. to sit there and basically say if you don't like what Trump is doing, you go out and get you a good job and you vote <laughs> and you try to be like Kenneth Chenault, who used to be the pre, you know the president of Amex, and that's what you do to succeed. So she's going to amplify black people that are going to share her, her message and her, and her rhetoric share her narrative. and right. share her right. narrative. So I think that what you could do, like just showing like. We're not a monolith. You just said you at one point were you supported stop and frisk, right? And so in this room, you might have four or five different black attitudes about stop and frisk. That's a valuable conversation worth having. Right. You know, having somebody like her who's not going to be reached, who's not going to be changed, 
you can't help her. You can't stop her from doing what she's doing. Can't save that her. would be the loss mm. of her career. She's not <laughs> she's, she's not going to turn it. around and become a liberal <laughs> pundit <laughs> and be on MSNBC. I, she's found a lane that works for her. But what you can do is hold yourself to a standard where it's like we're going to have conversations that impact people's lives. We're going to bring people on here to educate. So Envy's is not feeling away. You all did do the Stop yes, the Free Show, right? We did. Definitely did. Right, yeah, you had to make a mountain out here. <laughs> right. So no like, but, and I, will, yeah. I will also say you da- d- um, digging deeper on Stop and Frisk um, mm-hmm. and interrogating these things is when, so one of the things I was shocked about was when Donald Trump released his um, outreach plan of African Americans on media takeout and boss up, right? He skipped over anybody who asked him an important question and to interrogate what he was actually saying about black people. And I think um, the, the, the thing that would make you initially think you can support Stop and Frisk is what he's using to push the, his platform onto our communities, is what Tommy is using to push our platform onto our communities. We know what Black Lives Matter is, but there are still so many black people because we're still living in cities that are high crime rates who honestly believe that we should be locking everyone up. Right. And we have to do the additional thought process or um, enter in more conversations, more viewpoints to get people to see what that actually means for black folks, it won't mean that your communities are safer. It will actually mean that more of your community is locked up, right? So those are the other pieces, like why it's so critical that we dig deep on these and ask these tough questions without giving more of a platform to white supremacy, because we're in a time where that can actually take hold in our community. Now, I mean, it was good. It was it was good that we had that conversation because it opened up a lot of people's mind, minds, not yeah. just mine. Like even with, with Floyd Mayweather, when he said uh, all lives matter and people got on him, right? Mm-hmm. And I was thinking to myself, he probably just doesn't know. Right. He's he probably, just needs he, a he's conversation. In a, he's in a tax bracket where he probably doesn't see things the same way anymore. Right. And he needs that conversation. And yeah, all lives matter sounds do, good to a politically attack. correct person. Right. Yeah, you know right. what I mean? Right. You know? Absolutely. Like, it's just, again, but if we keep allowing mm-hmm. our celebrities and our, you know, radio hosts and our journalists and people with a large platform to say things that are counterproductive, mm-hmm. that don't push conversation further, that don't help us as a people, then we're going to continue to have situations like we did in November where we look up and say, oh my God, we've elected this Lord. person who yeah. is a reality star. Yeah. You know, he's not a politician and he's super racist and he's going to empower all these people who are not only racist, but they're career politicians. So they know how the system works. They're not him like, wow, I didn't realize how much worth this was. I thought I was going to produce The Apprentice and live in Trump Tower and be right. president. Mm-hmm you know, three days a week. Like, what <laughs> he's doing, what he's creating right now is a very dangerous cabinet right. and people that mm-hmm. will do harm to people like us and people who listen to this show. And so I just think that they're now more than ever the call to have politicians on here, to have pundits, mm-hmm. you know, and to mm-hmm. and to not be upset. That, I know, but I'm just saying, like, <laughs> in addition to that, when somebody calls you out for something that you said, that's not the time to lash out, that's not the time to get mad, it's to do what we're doing right now and have a dialogue about it. I give everybody the benefit of conversation. Because I have seen conversations change from people over the years. Like, I've, like I can look at Lena Dunham. Lena Dunham got that lashing on social media, <laughs> and she immediately... But she's no Tommy Lauren at all. Black and brown people she's not, and she, learning. I would never. She understands how black women have been excluded from the feminist feminism mm-hmm. rhetoric for so long, and mm-hmm. she's trying to include them now. Like I've seen it yeah. literally change people over the years. So I give everybody the benefit of the conversation. If they don't change after that, f them. That's how I feel about Tommy. Anybody else? And that's how people feel about you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, I know there are, certainly are people that are like I'm not going on there. I wouldn't talk to him. You know, which I think is silly because it's yeah. like, okay, you disagree with them. He'll, if he gives you access to his platform, you use it to say what you got to say. You go home. That does not mean that we're, you know, friends or that it's like, yeah, you know, Would you go on the blaze woke. then? I wouldn't go on the blaze because I don't think there's any value in me just a lot. Whether I win the argument or she talks circles around me, I just feel like nobody's going to really be educated by that. You don't go to the blaze to watch it because you have an open heart. You know what I mean? It's not even, it's it's right. to the right of Fox News. Right. You know, I just think all that would happen <laughs> is that I right. would get more. <laughs> that's pretty far right. That's almost making like a complete circle. <laughs> but like, all I would get would be more death threats, more people harassing me, more yeah. scrutiny around what I'm doing. I'm more concerned with convincing black people of our own humanity than I am trying to convince white people of our humanity. Amen. And convincing black people of our power. Yes. We have, so we have power. We have power, but we cannot adequately use that power until... For example, our men really come to terms with the ways that black women suffer at the intersection of racism and sexism, how you all can perform that and be complicit in that. Mm -hmm. It's not just white men that are doing us harm. 
It's not just domestic violence that's doing us harm. Right. It's how we're treated by people who we raise, who we nurture, who we date, mm -hmm. who we love. That's not always fair and equal and just. And right. so it can be very small. It could be calling us females on Twitter. It could be not listening to us. It could be more, you know, just simply f appearing like you're more open right. to a Tommy than you are to somebody like us. It could be berating little mama until she cries because oh. she's in the, mm. you know, she's yeah. she's little mama and she's a punchline. And it's no yeah, big deal. I just want to say that. I'm in the But then you work in media, so you have to think about optics. So, yes, I can name a lot of really great interviews you've done since then and times that you've right. talked to a black woman and it was dope and it was great. But that's the thing that's in people's memory. Right. But you have to work right, against though. them. That's how imagery right. works. Right. So you have to work against mm -hmm. that. You can't just be neighbor like, yeah, I didn't do it. I did it six years ago. It's no big deal. Forgive me. It's like, forgive me because of my actions since then. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe even bringing her on. Again. She's, She's been back. back. She's yeah, been back. You apologize. Back. You apologize. You apologize. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I just, I'm looking forward to a spot. And um, we talk about this with my co-host, Jasmine Walker. Have to give her a shout out. The King of the South. Um, about how we need to hold the line that if it's not, um, liberation just can't be for um, some black folks, right? If we're not extending this to LGBTQ folks, queer, trans people, um, women, then it's anti-black. That if we can't incorporate, if we can't bring all of us to justice together, then it's not it's not what we're actually looking for, which is our collective liberation. Everybody got to make it to the other side with us, you know? I'm with you. I like dealing with women more than men anyway. I do. I'd rather <laughs> have a bunch of strong women around me than a bunch of guys. And we yeah, appreciate right. you guys for coming up here. This is an amazing conversation. so much. This was great. And yeah, the platform is always open Even to though you, you went to we'll still let you out. <laughs> and Amber. This, <laughs> is like a, this is like a demo for Amber. She don't even yeah. know it. <laughs> but, I, I would look forward to seeing y'all again. I'm ready. All Put right. me at the mentorship, whatever you need. There's yeah. a bunch of black women behind me who are like y'all know they're we're there and we're ready and we're on the front lines and w they would love to talk to you. And tell me where they can find you one last time. Oh yeah, so I'm Amber J Phillips um, online. You can also find me on theblackjoymixtape.com. We're mm -hmm. Black Joy Mixtape on Twitter and Instagram, and we would love to hear from y'all. And Jamila, we appreciate you for joining us too. Thank you. Tell them where they can flirt Thank with you, Jamila. You. <laughs> I'm DMs. You know, my DMs are closed right now, but uh, <laughs> um, I'm at Jamila Lemieux on Twitter and Instagram. Um, please stay tuned for what we're working on at Interactive One. And thank you again for having us. Thank you for thank coming. You. All thank right. you. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Oh. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Hey, hey, hey. The Breakfast Club. Every weekday morning. Tune in.